I can face tomorrow. Be good morning, church. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. You are all welcome here to Word of His Power, Faith Christian Center. We are all in a place where lives are changed and people are truly blessed. And it's exciting to see you all here this morning. And for those of you all watching us online and all the social media platforms, thank you so much for connecting with us. So please, it is time for our Holy Ghost confession. So please point to yourself and say to yourself that the joy of the Lord is my strength. And if you believe that, say amen. Amen. Thank you very much. So this morning, I just have a few quick announcements. So we just want to friendly remind you that our Wednesday prayers and Friday um, Bible study still continues. Wednesday prayer is an hour Bible reading and prayers from 7 to 8. And then Friday is, um, we are studying the gospel, the, the gospel of John, and it's from 7 p.m to 8 p.m. as well. And so please, if you haven't registered yet, you can go on our church website and do so. And also, please keep in mind that um, on December 24th and December 31st, we will be having church service on those dates. So please keep that in mind. And then lastly, um, children and youth, you have church this morning. You'll be dismissed right after worship is done. On that note, that's all the announcement for today. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for giving us this new life, the resurrected life together with Christ Jesus. Your word says, Father, and we believe, therefore we confess. Even while we were dead in our sins, you out of your great and rich mercy and grace, you have quickened us together, raised us up together, seated us up together, together with Christ Jesus, far above all principality, power, might, and dominion. We are seated with Christ Jesus, and our position in life has completely changed. We have a position of authority in the name of Jesus Christ. And we are authorized to use his name. The name of Jesus is the person of Jesus. The name of Jesus is the presence of Jesus. The name of Jesus is the power of God. So we use our authority, stand against our satanic enemies, and we command you, take your hands off of our life. Our future is secured in Christ Jesus. We are not afraid of anything. We are not afraid of what is happening in the world. We are not afraid of disease and sickness and disease. We are not afraid of even sin because sin has no power over us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are not afraid of lack and poverty. For Christ has authorized us and the abundance of life is ours. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We declare victory in every area of our life. Spiritually, mentally, physically, financially, we are the victorious one for our God, our Father, continuously causes us to win always in Christ Jesus. We are made complete in Christ Jesus. Therefore, we rejoice. We are not afraid of tomorrow. We are not afraid of anything, for God is with us. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? No weapon that is formed against us shall ever prosper, for God is good and his mercy induced forever and ever. Oh, we give thanks unto the Lord. You alone are good, Father. Receive all praise, glory, honor, for you have blessed us. You have blessed us. You have healed us. You have given us victory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you in Jesus' name. And everyone said Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. This is a wonderful day. I believe that and I believe you are in agreement with what God says. Because the Bible says this is the day. The Lord has made. We woke up all right, but God has made a day for us. A day, according to what we believe, we can establish it for today. For God to get all the glory in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. As the children and youth, they are progressing for their service. I don't know. I'm already too much excited, as you can see. But then... You start valuing things of God, you will be excited too. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Again, we welcome every one of you. 
for joining us physically as well as through the digital streaming service from around the world. We are so honored that you have hunger for the word of God. You want to live this new life. You want victory in your life. And you have gathered this morning just to receive instruction and guidance to continue to step out in victory in every area of your life. So let us obey what God said, no matter what, because Jesus Christ is our apostle and high priest of our confession. And also Hebrews 13, 20 says, let us constantly, consistently, Give, offer up the sacrifice of thanksgiving that is continually acknowledging thankfully all the goodness of God and continuously giving glory in the name of Jesus Christ because what you believe and confess will be established no matter what is going around outside in the world. So say this with me, oh, I give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Oh, I give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good to me all the time, and his mercy endures forever. Oh, I give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. I am a spirit being. I have a soul. I live in this body. Because I am born again, the Holy Spirit of God is living in me. He is doing everything what Jesus said he would do for me. He is my helper. He is my comforter. He is my counselor. He is my advocate. He is my intercessor. He is my strengthener. And he is standing by to continuously to assist me to live a supernatural life. Because God is good to me all the time. And his mercy endures forever. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So last week, where we ended, will continue, because this is very important. What is important is you constantly learning and having to know the effect and the creative power you have in you, in your words. This is Bible. This is not some psychology. This is not something, you know, just mind control. This is how eternally things have been operating. Because you and I are children of God, recreated in His likeness and image. And Bible instructs in the New Testament constantly, constantly to imitate your father. The example Jesus showed how he did. And you are learning and not waiting to go to heaven to have a good life. You learn, to apply the word, and even before you go to heaven, you bring a little of heaven daily basis in your life to live like in heaven already here. It can be done. My teachers have practiced and shown, and I've been living this kind of lifestyle from 1993. It works. And again, I'm teaching you not to show off how much I know, but I'm teaching you after spending hours of study and prayer, because this church is going to reveal the reality, the truth, and the goodness of God through everybody's life, not through just head knowledge. Because I am blessed to be a pastor of 
a group of people, that is you all, you all don't attend Sunday service just like that. You come with purpose. Because our God is a God of purpose. So last week we said, let us first read the scripture, 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. It says here, let me get there. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. It says here in verse number 13. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore I have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. And then in the last verse, talking about, if you see the, the progression of this chapter, in the first few verses, Paul describes all the suffering he went through, but how, in spite of the suffering, he maintained a close walk with God, and how he successfully lived a wonderful life as a believer. So now, he's, through that experience, having seen how the word works, he is teaching that every believer should know this is the way eternal things work. You say, why I have to operate in eternal things? Because God came and gave you eternal life. If you have eternal life, then you have to learn the eternal ways. So he says, according as it is written, we believed, therefore we speak. I also believe, therefore I speak. Then he continues to describe about our body and our inner man. Though the outer man perish means decaying, slowly getting older. But the inner man is renewed day by day, getting stronger and stronger. And then he says in the last verse, 18th verse, while we look not at the things which are seen, in some translation it says, while we look not at the things, while we look not at the troubles. What is trouble? As long as you are going to be in this body, you and I will be surrounded with trouble. Trouble, you don't pray for trouble, it's automatically waiting to come. But still, you have to tell yourself, if you walk by everything, what you see, you'll be surrounded and immersed in nothing but trouble. But the good news is, in Psalm 91, God says, because he knows his name, he shall call upon me, I will answer me, I will answer him. He, I am with him in his all this trouble. I will, he shall call upon me, I will answer him and deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him. So God, you must know, God is along with our trouble. God doesn't bring trouble, devil brings trouble. But in the middle of all the trouble, God says, I am with you. That means, why such scriptures are written? Theologians and all these so-called religious people complicate things. It is very simple. He says, because the secret is here in this verse. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So he says, what you see through your natural eyes, they are temporary. If you are not happy about it, because when you go, as you go, you see. And as you see, if you are not happy about it, it is temporary. By speaking, learning to speak, from the invisible things. What is invisible means what is invisible to our eyes, but it is visible to your inner man, the inward man, the spirit man, who is recreated, who has got the nature of God. That means God sees everything, the Bible says, so you can also see everything from within. So which means you from the invisible thing, you start speaking and give life through your faith-filled word and create 
what the situation should be according to what it is written, what you believe, then you can create a situation and change your, not only your circumstance, but you can change your entire life. Religion teaches us you are a helpless, useless creature, you are a worm, you don't deserve anything, and you just do some kind of gimmickry and try to behave good before God, and God will be pleased with your goodness, and he is going to take care of you and bless you. That is all religious nonsense. God doesn't operate like that. You say, how do you know? Yeah, before I got born again, one third of my life, I was a religious priest. I was a religious man. I have done everything religiously, and I could not find answers or get my life changed. But that, thank God, the day I got born again, spirit-filled and filled with the Holy Spirit from that day to today, and will continue, I am seeing nothing but miracles, miracles, miracles. As far as I am personally concerned, I live like that kind of lifestyle. I was minding my own business, and I I was very happy with God, and my favorite prayer was, Oh Lord, the, the harvest is white and full, and I prayed to the Lord of the harvest, send forth the laborers, and I wanted all the laborers to go, and I wanted to be happy in the couch, in the corner. One day the voice of God said, You are one of the laborers, get to work. So I said, Okay. I have no pastoral age, uh, uh, Christian or pastoral heritage or anything, but I have two things. I have Jesus Christ, I have the word of God, and with or without anybody, I always tell the world, I will make it and make it big time because that the same God who shed his blood for you, shed his blood for you, and he, he has gathered you, not by accident, you are all here, you, I never know you, I never knew you, I, you never knew me, but we are put together because of divine plan, because there is a time coming, and it is the time and hour very soon coming, that his church, you and I, be not only get ready and stay ready, because very soon the blessings of the Lord is going to overtake the body of Christ and you are going to see great signs and wonders because the hour is showing right around, look around like Jesus himself said, we know to see the discern the weather and everything but it is time you better discern because God wants faith people because he already said when I come will I see faith so he is telling you have the power to see the invisible thing you must know one thing. Forget about all these signs and all of those things. Some of the scientific things, research came because people were capable of seeing the invisible thing and come out with mathematical, you know, formulas and say, hey, we can fly, we can do this, we can do that. But it's all they were able to see from the invisible thing. That means you and I have the same power. So how do you see invisible thing? That means, if you talk in all sophisticated language, nobody will understand. Jesus always spoke simple things. He taught in a plain way so that you can just take it and start acting on it. So what is this scripture saying in four, 2 Corinthians 4.18 is, what we see is temporary, what we don't see is eternal, and everything in the world today and even tomorrow is going to be created out there from what is vis invisible, from that is going to come the visible. And God says to a believer, because you are born again, I have sent the Holy Spirit within you, I have got, I am staying inside of you, you stay in connection, contact, and maintain the relationship with me. I will show you, show you where, not to your head, not to your feeling, but he's going to show you the inward man, the spirit man. I will show you. You say, how do you know God will show you? He said so. He said, call unto me, I will answer you, show you things you know not. So you don't have to have some special kind of college or degree or anything. All you need to know is God is with you, God is for you, you have his word, and you just keep confessing and keep believing that, and you will see God start talking to you. 
So he says, I give you that power. From that, I will tell you, you do this or you, you should go this way. That is how he has operated for all the people with whom God operated in the Bible who became famous, all big, big, great names. They are all operated by their faith, by being in contact with God. The same principle applies. But then how do you see? What does it mean by seeing the invisible thing and speaking to the visible thing? Because Jesus showed. Jesus spoke to trees. He spoke to wind. He spoke to waves. He spoke to um, spirits which cannot be seen. Evil spirits are there. Even now evil spirits are there. But the wonderful thing is, you don't have to even wait to see or feel the evil spirit. You have authority. Positionally, you are seated above them. They are under your feet, the Bible says. You believe that anything which is bothering you, instead of trying to figure out, simply take the name of Jesus and say, I reject this. Take your hands off of my mind. You have got to say that, it will stop. Instead, the world and the religion teaches, oh, you feel like that, oh... Let us have a special group, crying group, we will counsel group, and you cry, I cry, you tell your problem, I tell my problem, and let us compare whose problem is big, and then go home with a bigger problem. I came with only my problem, now that I know your problem also, I don't get proper sleep because your problem looks more frightening than my own problem. That is not life. So that means you have to first understand, even though this is where last week we left, even though we live in a physical house, in an address we have, we live in a street, home, apartment, whatever, that is not your house. That is a parking space by your faith you found and you are parked there. In the book of Peter, the outer body is called your house. The body is the call, the temple of the Holy Spirit. That means in this, inside the body, you have your spirit man who is born again and the Holy Spirit together living with the spirit man to help him. But Holy Spirit doesn't help automatically all because you are good. You have to, every time when you want help, you have to ask. How do I explain that? For example, I want this to be uh, shifted, say this, uh, this uh, pulpit has to be shifted a little down. I don't want to show off, say, I have, you know, try to be like some imagines, uh, I am Arnold Schwarzenegger and lift it. I can do it, but I may end up hurting my back. So I can simply say, Brother Tim and Brother Barry, could you please help me? That means when I ask, they will come, hold on both sides and help me. And then together, three of us will be easily get it down, right? Same way, in your life, like Tim and Barry, you have the word and the spirit to help you. So you ask their help. When you want answer, Always, I learned it and still learning it. Tell your mind, what does the Bible say? Because according as it is written, you believe and you speak, you can have result. That's what the scripture says. Now focusing, now coming back to our lesson. You live in this body. Your house is this house. So really where you live is inside you. Inside you, whatever your spirit man is hearing from God, he releases those ideas in thought form. The Bible says, all thoughts come from the heart. So in Galatians 5, it says, you know, if you are not watching, you are not careful, and if you don't change your habit, you will have all evil thoughts from your heart. Adultery, fornication, all those things, they are a thought. First, it comes in the form of thoughts. So that thoughts, you processes in your head and give words and people start doing things, but the thoughts comes from your heart, but now that you are born again, you can receive the thoughts of God. Remember, God said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My words, my ways are not your ways. Isaiah 55 says that. 
So God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. God's ways are higher than his ways. And that, that thought is given to us in two places. One in the Bible, which you carry, and another, the Holy Spirit, who is the author of the Bible, he lives in you. So his thoughts on and off, based on your sincerity. That is why it is important that you maintain relationship with God. You can, relationship from God's side, he will not break. Because he says, he's your father, you are his child. He will not break the relationship, but you can break the fellowship. Fellowship means you little while you pray when trouble comes. Otherwise, you are doing your own thing. You don't bother about the importance of the Holy Spirit in you. You don't bother the importance of the Bible in you. And you hear some old tradition or some religious thing which you learn. You think you can get by with that. And that is where the devil comes into place and distracts all the believers. And they are not successful as they ought to be successful. So where do you live? You actually live inside how do you live? Because what you are, the God, you get constantly godly thoughts and also you get thoughts created by your own words and thoughts released through outside world. That thoughts is processed in your soul, which is your mind. Your soul has got three parts. You must know that. This is not science, this is faith. Your soul has got three parts. One is your mind. The mind has got tremendous capacity to process thoughts, imagination. It has got tremendous capacity. It is faster than a computer, but it is your mind. But first, you have to befriend your mind. You have to bring your mind to listen to you first. Otherwise, the mind will go and listen to everything else. And before the devil becomes your enemy, your mind will become your enemy. And you don't want that. So, when thoughts are released, the mind process, while processing it, get, gives information, like in your computer. Then, to your soul is attached your emotions. Emotions are given with a reason, because through emotion, your body communicates. Hey, what do you think? I feel good. Body says, okay. then body and the mind, when I agree, you go and do that. You think about your favorite uh, German hot chocolate or, you know, uh, favorite dark chocolate ice cream. You keep thinking, the, the body says, that feels good. And then the mind says, let us go and have one. Your mouth said, let us go and have one. But instead of one stick, you get a tub. Then you eat the tub. And then body says, you know, I'm putting on weight. I am not comfortable. The mind says, but it tastes good. You said, let us go. See, that forms a habit. So emotions are given. It is the voice of your body. But for a faith person, he is supposed to know the feeling, but not act on the feeling. The just shall walk by faith and not by sight. Sight is a form of your, based on your emotion. So God says, don't go there. So you are actually living inside. So it is a choice. You can choose what is going on inside. You can choose. Yeah, every constantly we are choosing. But the wonderful thing for a believer is God is there to help you choose the right thing. Choose always. If you seek his help, he will help you. So you are living inside. So when you live inside, it's a fact. You know, people say, I have heard even Christian songs. They say, oh, I have got some time. The weaknesses come. There is a, that kind of, my kind of a, my bad side came outside. Anybody has heard that? My bad side. We see that man's bad side coming out. Have you heard that phrase? That is there in everybody, but that doesn't mean to justify the bad side. You don't talk like that. You take the help of God and overcome the bad side because you are now a child of a good God and you are a, already you are good. You don't have to try to be good. You are a good person. You basically, if you are a believer, you are a good person with some bad habits which can be overcome by your own words. World and religion will teach, oh, you know, you are an addiction. This is an addiction. 
Oh, this pain, you need to, this pain, this painkiller tablets are no more working. So you need to go and sit in a corner and smoke some weed and then puff it away and then we like that and your life will be useless for anybody and you keep puffing until the word agrees with you that your life is nothing but a vapor and a puff and along with the puff, puff you go and that is not God's way. So God says, you are living inside. That means you have the ability to focus. Focus on good as well as bad. So what is focus? I'm glad you asked. To me, these small words, when you understand the meaning of it, then you can operate more confidently. The word focus means... A central point as of affect, affectation, attention, or activity. And also it says, one meaning I liked it here, to direct one's attention or efforts. That means all of us as human beings have the ability to put efforts. Some are lazy, they won't put effort, they want others to do, but that's not the way Bible operates. Everyone has got the ability to put efforts. When you put effort and you have also the ability, God has given us that you must believe, the ability to folk pay attention to what? To first what God says, that's why God said in Proverbs 4.20, Son, attend to my word. That means he knows you can focus. If God says something, that means you have the ability. God will never tell you to do something, but he doesn't believe you can or cannot do. Only we tell a human being, force people to do. God never forces. If God tells you to believe him, because he first believes in you that everything what he says, you have the ability and the capacity and the help and the resources available made for you. It is a matter of choice. You can choose inside to live peacefully and happily, or you can choose just to be religious and just go on and kesara, kesara. And when you reach heaven on the judgment day, God will say, I gave you all these things. You never used any of this. Now you have come and see your life could have been better. And that day, we don't want to face that day. And that is part of judgment too. Because according to the what you use, you are going to be rewarded. Because it's all God's resource. So now, God says... What you learn to focus. Focus means think what is important. See, now, nowadays, you know, even down the road, the Lord showed me. That is why, because I asked the Lord, Lord, why did you say that when I come, will I find faith? Anybody has read the scripture, Jesus saying that? He said that, right? So I wanted to know why did he say. He, I'm a believer. And because if you don't know the answer, the devil will come and say, yeah, you, are, you all talk too much faith. Yaram, you talk too much faith. But Lord said, when he comes, he will not find faith in you. That is not true. So I asked the Lord, why did you say that will I find faith? Because see, people gradually, when they are not focusing, we have got so much distraction. Nowadays with artificial intelligence, human stupidity, all put together, you get all devices which to distract you with a lot of things, and you are focused, instead of focusing on what God said, Focusing on existence of God, focusing on the resources available for you, focusing on the grace of God available for you, focusing on the power of God available for you. Instead of that, if you are distracted after some time, because you are not focused, you will be speaking wrong things, and that is how everybody gets desensitized, and you make way for the Antichrist to come. On that day when he comes, more than any vaccination, he is going to put the mark of the beast on the people, and that is not any vaccination, that is a real mark. You understand? So now, we have to start focusing. Focusing on what? 
focus that you are a born again believer. I didn't ask any of those songs to be sung, but I was listening, worshiping in the office. The songs they sang already fits into the message which the Holy Spirit is telling. Because you declare, you be ready to say. Because don't expect immediate change, but what you say will come to pass. Because you are designed and called and chosen by God, every one of you, to be victorious, prosperous, and live long. The longer you live, greater things God can accomplish. So now focus means you pay attention. One example, Bible example. There are several, but one example. This morning, 2 o'clock, I was meditating. Suddenly the Lord said, this, that. did you see that? Because see, faith and focus, faith is a choice. You choose. Today, see many believers, they believe a little while and then choose to believe something else and they are confused. Faith is a choice. You choose no matter what to believe God and his word. It's a choice. And if you don't consistently hold for the, to that choice, your focus will not be where it should be. Focus is also in our older, earlier days in the school they thought, you know, they taught us saying that have concentration power. You concentrate on a particular subject. Nowadays, you know, you tell, again, our education system, it may say, we, we don't want to stand there and say education system is all bad. Or no, as long as you are God-fearing, if you are God-fearing parents, God will give you the wisdom and the ability to, that is why we have to direct our children towards God. Rest God will take care. So now, God says, one example I want to show you about focusing. You know this story in the book of Numbers, Numbers 13th chapter and 14th chapter. Chapters were put by man. It is all one long story. Numbers 13, first verse says, God, this is God, tells Moses. I'm paraphrasing and saying, so if you hear and there is not exact word in the Bible, don't start texting me, okay? Or send me email or put it in Instagram, or, or pastor. Just listen to the truth of it. God comes and tells Moses, Moses, select from the 12 tribes, 12 leaders, and I desire, I give this land for all these people. Because these people came as slaves from Egypt and grumbling, grumbling and griping and complaining whole bunch, the entire 12 tribes. And God says, Moses, you send 12 people to spy out the land and come back and report it to you. And I give this land. In present tense, it is written. I give this land to this people. Okay. So Moses obeyed God and sends 12 fellows. Their names are all written there in 13th chapter. You can read. In that 12 names, you will find two names. One fellow's name is Joshua. Another fellow's name is Caleb. They were also like other 10. They go to the inside the land where God told them. Remember, all of them were slaves. Their forefathers were slaves. They have got that mentality. They are surrounded with chaotic thinking. Everything is the same old way of thinking and talking and crying and griping. And they went. It is details you find. They found big, big grapes. So big, their two fellows had to carry the grapes on their shoulders. That was the size of the grape, and that was naturally grown. Not artificially made here, like in, you know, seedless, they say. Very soon you are going to get skinless grip. I don't know how, but you will get. <laughs> As we fall for it, and somebody will advertise and say, 
The more you eat skinless grape, your skin will be all right. Your skin is already all right. You confess Psalm 20, Psalm 103, you will get younger and younger, and you start to keep saying, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. I forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth me of all my iniquities, who healeth me of all my diseases, who redeems my life from destruction, who crowns me with this loving kindness and tender mercies, who fills my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. That means your skin is getting better and better just by you talking and not waiting for a skinless grape. This is what this works. This works. So Joshua and Caleb, they were among the ten, twelve. They come, they saw everything by sight they were seeing, including Joshua and Caleb. They saw everything, but they were not living in, they are going to live in that land. They did not, even though the benefits they saw, but their eyes went on the giants. And they came back, number, I mean, Numbers 13, verse, between 30 and the last verses, they said to Moses, because see, again, we live in democracy country. So democracy listens always to some bigger majority. Majority need not be always be right. You and God make the majority. Nobody else. So they come and tell, yeah, here is the grape. Here is the big fruits we saw. But there are equally giants also out there. And God says they brought an evil report because what they reported was based on what they saw, what they experienced. And they were living inside still the same old slave life. And the Bible says they brought an evil report. So what, where they living, where they were living inside as a slave, even though God says, I want to give you all this freedom and all this, everything, just you believe I am giving you this. But accepting Joshua and Caleb, in the 14th verse, by the time you come to the 6th verse, it says Joshua and Caleb got mad. They rent their clothes. See, that is expression God, one of the reasons God chose Israelite is they are the most expressive people. When they get happy, they dance, they shout, they sing. When they are sad, they put ashes. When they are angry, they tear their clothes. We also do, but not for the same reason they do. And Joshua and Caleb got made, rent their clothes and said, yeah, you guys, what are you talking? In the presence of Moses, they are saying, if God delights in us, see, they believe because God delights in them, God said, I give this land to these people. So Joshua and Caleb says, if God delights in us, he gives us this land. And they add, this land flows with milk and honey. So Joshua and Caleb have started living inside with what they hear from God through Moses' mouth. They started changing the focus from being a slave group to a godly group. All the 12 had the same resource, same circumstance, same ability, but two chose it, right? Joshua and Caleb chose to listen to what God said through Moses. And that is what they believed. That is what they repeated. They were not concerned about the grape. They were not concerned about the giant. They were not concerned about anything. God said, this land it belongs to you, and you are going to prosper in this land. They said, that is what it is, and it is ours. We can easily go and take the land with God's help. You say, what that has got to do? Same. Right now, we are surrounded with all negative talking people, negative thinking people, negative apps, negative everything. You have got a choice. You can either say, this is here, heaven is joining me. You can either say, you know, 
Okay, that is all looks okay. It looks like what I see can be believed, but I don't believe what I see. I believe what the word says. Word says differently. Word says I can overcome. Word says God is with me. Word says he is empowering me. Word says he will help me. Word says I have got the grace of God. Word says I got the power of God. Word says I got the ability in my tongue. In, jo- in James, the third chapter, it says, you know, with your tongue, you can control your body body and your circumstances, that is why it is compared to the br- br- bridle in the, in the mouth of a horse and the, the, uh, well, in the ship, what do you call it? I don't get the word immediately. You got it. You say, why, Pastor, are you trying to forget? No. See, I'm, as I rise in the spirit, when my mind tries to interfere, then there is a clash, then I don't get the word quickly. But God says, like the ship can be directed by that in small thing in the ship, and the horse can be directed with a small bridle, you can direct your life with your own tongue. Believe what God says. Speak. You say, I, my poverty days are over. I am not poor anymore. You don't say, I'm not going to be poor anymore. You say, I'm not poor anymore now. You say, my lack days are over. Because you speak. You say, I'm a tither. Because I'm a tither. What is the result of you being a tither? Bible says, you know, bring all the tithes into God's store so that there is food in God's house so that you you prove God and he opens the windows of heaven pours out for you a blessing which you cannot uh, which you don't have place to contain it overflows through you to others and God rebukes that devourer for your sake means apart from you having authority over Satan and hell God particularly takes extra extra step without prayer the moment you try uh, the devil try to steal from you he will rebuke he will rebuke the devourer means ahead of time devil, devil will be warned by God himself don't go this is my child don't even even put your eyes on them because they are honoring me they are not just paying me monthly fees or anything they are honoring me by obeying what I told them tithing is what brings and you don't have to even exercise your authorities in those areas but then you can use your authority in other areas where God directs you then you speak. You tell when you get... Uh, all problem will always have an interconnection with money. Right? So that's why the world says, you know, if you have money, we can do anything. Yeah, it is true. But you say, but how do I get money? This is how you call, you tell the angels. You read in Hebrews, the first chapter, the last verse says, angels are servants created to help you. You command the angels. Angels, go cause my business to come to me. Angels, go cause all my monies to come to me. And you tell God, thank you for rebuking the devourer out of my life. Thank you, I am a tither. Thank you because I am a cheerful giver. You are able to make all grace, every favor, earthly blessing come to me in abundance so that at all time, under all circumstances, I abound. I am self-sufficient. I am more than enough to do the work of God in Jesus Christ. These are the way you confess those scriptures. People read that and say, "Ah, that's good, that's good. Oh, you see? No, you, more than praying, you speak, keep speaking. Money will come to you because you say so. Instead, what people are focusing on more on the trouble, more on the price increase, more on the shortages, more on this. More. So if you keep focusing and forget, God said the silver and the gold is mine. All the cattle and all everything on the earth is mine. And I have given power for you to have dominion over them to serve God and people. And you forget that and you focus on all what is going around. Then what happens is people, even though they are believers, they talk about that struggle. They talk about not having enough. They talk about every time the prices are going, oh, uh, what am I going to... 
Why are you talking like that? Because you are going on seeing what you see, like the 10 people who saw, but Joshua and Caleb talk differently. They started focusing on the things of God. So you remember, God has promised you, because you are a believer, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter what is going around you. What matters is what comes out of your mouth. See, this is a very, very important subject. Now I realize, up till now I have been only giving you a preview. The main lesson we'll have to teach again last week. The text based on Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24. So we'll, we have got five minutes. We'll introduce the subject and continue next week. Amen? Amen or no amen, I'm the pastor, so I decided next week. But thanks for the amen. I love you all, believe me. I, because I want to, like one day I'm believing to get the best things from God, like Joshua, we stop the sun, stop that, and we release all the lesson what God has got for us, and we go out there and live victoriously. They will come. But you see, Mark 11, 23. We'll read that, and as the Spirit leads, we'll, we'll go one step at a time. Mark 11, 23. First, Jesus said, Mark 11, 22, have faith in God. That means, one translation says, I have the faith of God. And you have to remember what is silent there is the word you. Verse 22, Jesus said, have faith in God. That means you is missing. That is, you have faith in God or you have God kind of faith. This he said before he died and rose again. But now in 2 Corinthians 4.13, it says, you having the self-same spirit of faith. That means because you are born again, that same God kind of faith is given to you. You have it. You don't struggle for it. You don't pray for it. You have it. And that faith, how it works? It sees what is written According to that, he speaks. He believes in the heart, speaks from the mouth. That is how God kind of faith works. And he demonstrated that by speaking to the fig tree. Now, the 23rd verse. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Quickly before I go in more into detail, I'll give you, you go home and do this homework. In that verse, read it, you will find the word believing only one time, but saying three times. You find in that scripture, the word believing only one time, saying in different form is referred to three times. That means God says, you can easily believe something, but it takes three times the effort to believe and speak. And then he said, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So he's telling, like, when you have the faith of God, so you have prayer life should be full of faith. When you have the faith of God, when you believe and speak that in your prayer, and you can get your prayer answers, so he connects your speaking and prayer life and faith life into all into one combination, because you and I are created, recreated by God to live this faith life. So that is why he, he writes like that. Now, same story, go quickly with Matthew, the 21st chapter. Matthew 21. I'm just introducing, we'll discuss these details next week more because that's the way it is. Matthew 21 and 21. Jesus answered and said unto them, because after they pointed out the fig tree has been withered away, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith, and doubt not, 
you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if you shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. So Jesus is telling, if you have faith and you can speak based on that faith, not only what I did, you can also do speaking to the invisible thing because Jesus never saw the root, but he spoke. It withered away from the roots. So Jesus is telling, you can also speak to the visible thing from the in, seeing the invisible. And you speak, not only this tree, what I did is a small tree as compared to a mountain. That mountain is like a big problem in your life. You can speak to that problem. It may be health problem, it may be mental problem, emotional problem, financial problem. Doesn't matter. You have to learn to speak to the problem. So he says, you can do it. If Jesus says you can do it, guess what? What should be the answer from a believer's mouth? I can do it. Right? Now, go back to Mark, the 11th chapter. I'm going to read this verse because this is important. We are going to learn. Before learning, we should know what is the problem. In because I have seen people come to me and say, yeah, I believed, I spoke, nothing happened. See, because they either were not taught properly or they are imagining something and then complaining against God and his word. God never lies. God's word always works. It never fails. So now, that same scripture, I want to uh, read it in a translation called Dewey Rema translation. It is called DR, DRV. So now, see the same verse in this translation. It says here, And Jesus answering said to them, Have the faith of God. Amen, I say to you, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not stagger in his heart, but believe that whatsoever he saith, shall be done, it shall be done unto him. Therefore I say unto you, all things whatsoever you ask when you pray, believe that you shall receive, and they shall come to, unto you. Now, the important verse here is, in Mark 23, 11-23, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not stagger in his heart. The King James Version says, shall not doubt in his heart. Here, this translation says, stagger. See the word doubt, stagger, they are all synonymous words. Staggering means, the literal translation for staggering is, going back and forth. Going back and forth. So you will find in Romans, the fourth chapter, it says, Abraham, did not stagger in his faith through doubt and unbelief. But he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. That means Abraham, what he thought, what he spoke, he never went back and forth. What he thought, God said, he kept speaking only what God said. When staggering is allowed, I will show you how it works all next week. If because of staggering, many believers, even though they are sincere, even though they are doing what is told to them, but in this area, they are lacking because they have allowed staggering in their life. Another meaning for staggering, the book of James, it says, a double-minded man will get nothing from God. So staggering also involves back and forth, double-mindedness. So we are going to learn how to avoid those things next week. And we are going to become more proficient 
and saying what we believe, and we are going to see our lives change, our world transform, everything about us is rising high and living a victorious, healthy, long, and prosperous life for God's glory. In Jesus' name I say that, and you say amen. That means you agree, and God will do that for us. Amen. Praise God. Thanks for your enthusiasm. All of you stay like that. Also tell yourself under your breath, I value things of God. I value things of God. Because God loves me. He's always good to me. He's teaching me wonderful things. My better days and good days are ahead of me. And I always believe the best is always yet to come. But God wants me to have it. And I will have it for God's glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. You all have a great day. God bless you. Remember, the chicken is dead. Hello, I'm Linda, the ministry rep here at Word of His Power Church. Thank you for joining us today. I would like to remind you to check out our website at wohp.org and like and share and follow us on social media. We are Word of His Power, where lives are changed and people are blessed. Thank you. From a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt.